Welcome to Mojo Travels, and today we're counting down our picks for the coolest real estate in James Bond movies. Are you a fan of our videos? Be sure to subscribe to Mojo Travels and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at landmarks, mansions, and other structures from the James Bond franchise that'll summon your inner secret agent. Number 10, Chateau du Net, Drew France. While this elegant castle was also featured in The Pink Panther Strikes Again, Thunderball marked its most prominent cinematic appearance. Sean Connery drops by Chateau de Net before the opening credits roll. The chateau serves as Jack Bouvoir's residence where a fight breaks out. Mr. Bond makes a clean getaway though with his trusty jetpack. In reality, the mansion was fashioned for Henry II's mistress, Diane du Poitier. French architect Philippe Dulorme oversaw the construction, designing hallmarks like the chapel's whirling coffered dome. Other highlights include Diane de Poitiers' bedroom, the grand staircase, and Jacques Molay's garden. Although it's since moved to the Louvre, the chateau was the original site for the Fountain of Diana, depicting de Poitiers as the goddess Diana herself. Number 9. Dunsmere House, Oakland, California from dark comedies like So I Married an Axe Murderer to cult horror pictures like Phantasm, the Dunsmere House has developed a diverse filmography. Its classiest appearance can be found in A View to a Kill. This particular Bond film is grounded in California culture. The Oakland real estate belongs to Bond girl Stacey Sutton, an oil tycoon's granddaughter who's forced to sell much of her family's belongings during a legal battle. Behind the scenes, this neoclassical revival mansion is still used for reenactments, get-togethers, and weddings. That last one is tragically ironic, as Alexander Dunsmere originally had the house built for himself and his betrothed. Dunsmere died on his honeymoon, and his new wife passed away not long after, never living in the house again. Number 8. The Eden Project, Cornwall, England Defined by its geodesic biodomes, the Eden Project naturally looks like a structure right out of a Bond picture. Two years after its completion, the greenhouse complex would pop up and die another day. Before it hosted the world's largest indoor rainforest, this site was a clay quarry in Cornwall. For the movie, the Eden Project was given an Icelandic makeover, providing a backdrop for Gustav's Graves' diamond mine and vast greenhouse. Through the right lens, the locale certainly has an aesthetic worthy of a Bond villain's lair. While Graves' Ice Palace was primarily based on the Yukas Yave Ice Hotel, we wouldn't be surprised if the Eden Project also provided some inspiration. Despite the villainous undertones, the Eden Project is a truly peaceful attraction. Number 7. Piz Gloria, Schilthorn, Switzerland This revolving restaurant not only has ties to the film On Her Majesty's Secret Service, but also Ian Fleming's novel of the same name. In Fleming's 1963 book, Bond pays Blofeld a visit to his lair on Piz Gloria. Six years later, the real-life Piz Gloria opened atop the Shilton, getting its name from Fleming's novel. It only made sense to use Piz Gloria as a shooting location for the film adaptation, which came out that same year. The restaurant provides the venue for Blofeld's Swiss Alps Allergy Research Clinic. Using the location to its full advantage, Bond also does some skiing. Today, visitors can order the James Bond package, which includes cable car tickets, a 007 burger, and an optional dry martini cocktail. Number 6. Matera, Italy From classic Italian films to modern blockbusters, Matera is no stranger to cinema. The city most recently played an integral role in Daniel Craig's final Bond picture, No Time to Die. Matera represents James' shot at a fresh start with Madeline. Whether you're looking for a honeymoon destination or someplace exotic to retire, we'd all love to escape to Matera. The city is a work of art, with Sassy de Matera serving as the chef d'oeuvre. Distinguished by ancient cave dwellings, the district provided a filming location for Bond's thrilling car chase. Not far away from Matera is Gravina in Puglia, and the Roman bridge where Bond narrowly escapes death. Matera has been described as a symbol of life, so you haven't lived until you visited. Number 5. Chateau de Valdecont, Mansi, France Only a select few will ever venture into space like Bond did in Moonraker. However, we can all book a trip to Chateau de Valdecont, which pops up in the film. Considering that the villainous Hugo Drax owns a space station, it doesn't surprise us that he can afford a residence like Valdecont. In addition to exterior shots, the chateau was also used as a shooting location for Drax's Grand Salon. Chateau de Gourmands, which is about 40 minutes away, was also used for interior shots. Although the film implies that the mansion is in California, both chateaus actually reside in France. 
Volvicont is the standout of the two thanks to Louis Lavar's architecture, André Le Nôtre's landscaping, and Charles Lebrun's interior decorating. Number 4. Hashima Island, Northeast Asia Bond villain layers are usually in pristine condition. Since Raul Silva is one of Bond's grittier adversaries though, it makes sense that his hideout would reflect this. Hashima Island, aka Gukenjima, or Battleship Island, was known for its underground coal mines. When the coal started running low in 1974, the island was abandoned, leaving its concrete buildings to dwindle away. Although you can still find ways to visit the island with restrictions, only exterior shots were used for Skyfall. The filmmakers ultimately decided to recreate part of the island at Pinewood Studios, with CGI filling in the rest. Located off the coast of Nagasaki, Japan, if this deserted island's connection to James Bond doesn't pique your interest, its bleak history and even bleaker state will. Number 3. Somerset House, Strand, London Among various other films, Somerset House has the distinction of appearing in two Bond pictures from the Pierce Brosnan era. The neoclassical complex made its 007 debut in GoldenEye. Although any Strand local will recognise this historic structure, the film led audiences to believe it was in St. Petersburg. Production designer Crispin Reese described Somerset House as imposing and authoritarian looking, suiting the backdrop they were going for. The filmmakers fooled us again in Tomorrow Never Dies, where Somerset House doubled as MI6 headquarters. While the films are a tad misleading, Somerset House is every bit as stunning as it appears on screen. In addition to admiring the architecture, you can dance in the fountains and hit the ice rink during the winter season. Number 2. Aelan Donnan, Scotland Most cinephiles will recognise this island's castle from Highlander, arguably Sean Connery's most famous movie outside of the Bond franchise. So it was only a matter of time until Aelan Donnan surfaced in a Bond film. In what could be seen as an homage to the original Bond, the castle functions as the MI6 Scottish headquarters from The World Is Not Enough. Also known as Castle Thane in the film, the headquarters features a Q-Branch laboratory and medical facilities. While you won't find any of that on the actual 13th century castle, Aelan Donnan is still an architectural marvel open to visitors. The castle even serves as a wedding venue, while the neighbouring Aelan Donnan cottage and apartments accommodate overnight guests. Number 1. Monastery of the Holy Trinity, Greece The Monastery of the Holy Trinity was tailor-made for a Bond picture. While the monastery itself is masterfully assembled, it's the location that makes the structure stand out. Located in the Penis Valley, the monastery sits atop rocky cliffs that stretch 400 metres high. While the view is unparalleled, the interior is also eye-catching, with frescoes decorating the walls. Built in the 14th and 15th centuries, the Eastern Orthodox Monastery offered a hair-raising climatic backdrop in for your eyes only. Known as St. Cyril's Monastery in the film, Bond breaks into the mountaintop site to retrieve the ATAC device. You can either access the monastery with a winch-operated lift or on foot, assuming you have a head for heights, as Mr. Bond might put it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Mojo Travels, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.